Hey everyone, what is up? Welcome back, finally, to another video. It's been three solid weeks that I haven't really been able to get out and you know do some off-roading, do some uh, cooking outdoors. I did have a video I put up that was from last summer and it was really fun putting that together. But it's been, uh, you know, some of those spring spring weekends the last the three weeks in a row it's rained like Thursday Friday leading up to the weekends <clears throat> with the melting of the snow and the addition of this rain it's made everywhere really really muddy now I'm in the Tacoma today <laughs> it's a interesting little twist I was gonna take the GX 470 out loaded it up with my I got two camera bags, I got a little, you know, a couple of food bags, stuff like that. Loaded it all up, was ready to go, put the key in, click, no start. Now the battery wasn't like completely dead, it still had, you know, I could open it and close it with the key fob, and the, you know, the lights were coming on, but the GX has had a pretty tough winter with all the snow wheeling I've done with it, a lot of winching. It looks like I'll have to get another battery for the GX. So th this was parked in the driveway. I just moved everything over and took off in this. So it delayed me a little bit this morning, but I'm out now. I'm gonna head up here and see what everything looks like. Got some clouds that rolled in on me as I'm heading back in here. I don't think it's gonna rain. They're, they're dark clouds, but I don't think it's gonna rain. There is a little bit of water down in this dry creek that I've never seen water in. There's a big cow up here. There's not that much water down there though, that's for certain. The roads after a, a good winter and now some rains, the roads got some, some decent ruts in them, not too bad. They're actually in line with the road, which is much smoother than when they cross the road on you. Pretty dark back in here though. Drop down to the forest. A lot of, lot of standing water on the track. There's a lot of trees down. It's the ground is super soft and with the winds we've been having, but here's three more. Actually, there's four, four there. That one's big and it fell all the way across the road. Luckily, someone's already chainsawed it for me. You can just see the, the root ball is pulled up. These trees don't go that deep with their roots. And this, this area here, it's a lot of different types of ground. This is really kind of like sandstone, sandy, sandy ground and when it gets wet, a little windy, doesn't take much to up in these trees. I'm trying a little something different today. I'm actually going to use my jet boil with this 
pot holder on the top. I've never used it. It doesn't really, it says it locks on there, but it's a little flimsy. I am going to make pot roast, but I'm not gonna make pot roast. I made pot roast yesterday. It takes eight hours, six hours to make a good pot roast. So I've got pot roast here. We're gonna heat it up on the jet boil. Make it, make it simple. It's like a lot of those pre-made meals you can bring out with you. If, if maybe your adventure is more about off-roading and driving and uh, destinations or the journey or looking at things and it's not so much about cooking, pre-making stuff can save you a lot of time but still allow you to eat something that tastes really good. So I'm going to try this out, see how this works. I've never tried this thing. Hopefully it doesn't fall over. So I have carrots, mushrooms, potatoes, the roast meat, a little juice. I didn't bring any bread, but I'm going to put a little bit of water in here just to see if it'll help cook this bad boy. This should be interesting. Where's that starter at? Oh, it's right here. I'm try I've got it kind of balanced here. It's definitely more exposed like this, where the jet boil itself goes down and that's why it's able to heat so fast as it captures that flame, but this area is pretty cool. It's, uh, it's up in the high desert, but higher into the mountains. And this valley that I, you kind of climb up and out of the high desert, go over and drop into a, um, a valley in between all these mountains. And as you're dropping in, you can see it's all these uh, smaller pine trees in here and a lot of the kind of desert bushes, but just a little bit bigger. Some oak, you can see some oak leaves and stuff around, oak trees. But this is uh, one of our heavily populated mountain lion areas because there's these very extreme cliffs everywhere. A lot of, a lot of different levels, big rocks and stuff. They really like this area. So I hope they don't like pot roast. <laughs> so far so good. Putting the water in there, I'm using it, the water's kind of boiling, but it's also soaking up all those juices, and as it boils down a little bit, that's going to turn into just a little bit more sauce. I think we cooked this for about six and a half, maybe seven hours yesterday. Slow simmer all day. I thought I'd try something just, you know, a little bit different each time. I don't want to do the same thing all the time. Cooking out here is, is challenging, but it's fun too, right? That challenge is, is part of it. But like this is something that uh, is delicious and it's easy to bring out. I mean, once we're done with it, we just pack it into those snap lock containers and you could just grab one and bring it with you. Now, instead of having to bring a big stove or have a fire, I wanted to try the jet boil on this because I've had that little, the pot adapter forever and I've never used it. This is the first time, I'm pretty sure this is the first time using it. I couldn't even figure out how to get it to lock on, but, and then I've got some backpacking pot, that pot there houses like two plates, two cups, two lids are all inside there. And the other pot that came with it actually goes inside it as well. But I carry that in my little kitchen bags. So I'm trying out this pot, really lightweight. It transfers the heat. Something like this where you're using liquids, transferring that heat is really good. When you're cooking like eggs and stuff like that, not so good. It's really hard to control that heat. So I'll go check on this thing. Looks pretty good. Oh, yep. It's at the right temp.
Well, that thing worked pretty good. Hmm. A little liquid in here. Would have been perfect to bring some bread. I love these little corn, or <laughs> corn. I love these little carrots. Now I'm told that to make these kind of baby carrots, and I would air quote if I had two hands, they actually use like a water jet, like a water blaster, and they blast down a carrot into multiples of these. But there are some that you can buy, a lot more expensive, that are like the real baby carrots with the little, they have the little stalk on them and everything. I think we used those last time and it was, they were really good. Like I said, these kind, they just take them and they hit them with like a water jet to cut them out of a carrot. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Mmm. They're like the perfect texture. They don't, they're not hard, but they're not mushy. Mmm, so good. And then I used the leftover uh, potatoes that I used from that breakfast burrito. Mmm, like buttery smooth. And then here's the meat. So the meat is always the key, right? And usually in a roast, we use actually very cheap, cheap cuts of meat. Mmm. I think she said it's like chuck. Chuck, something like that. But if it you can see it like pull it just falls apart. It just you there's no knives needed. You just uh use your fork to pull it pull it apart on the plate. Mmm. Man. The benefit to this type of well, you could really call it cooking call it reheating or something is that there's no I couldn't make this out here I mean I could if I was set up say I was here in one spot for two days right because you'd have to be you get here you set up you get up in the morning and then you start cooking this and you cook it all day and by the the second night you could have something like this because to do this one right at least the way we do it let me see if I can pull up a chair it's the beauty of uh, of the truck. <laughs> uh, it, you know, this could have been a challenge bringing this out today. Obviously, um, no winch on this. I, in the back here, I do have some some old traction boards and a shovel. But the thing about this is, and that most important first mod that you make on any any adventure vehicle, tires. This has got those street all terrains. And they're small. They're like 30 inch or whatever they come with from the from the factory. So it could have been a challenge, but it's actually like perfect conditions for for off-roading and overlanding, adventuring through here. I came up off the kind of the the main track that leads through this valley. I came up going up toward the cliff. I tried to get up farther, but there's so much, so many down trees, so many down branches that I didn't really want to drive over too much stuff. Man, this really turned out good. I hope you can see what it looks like in there. This is the meaty pot roast. Mm. You know, there's things like this when you're when you're reheating something, anything, because. There's only two of us, so we when we make something, we always have leftovers. And she doesn't really like eating leftovers. I, I do, especially if it's something like this. Pot roast ham, like any time Easter, Christmas, when we have a ham. Man, I eat ham for the next week, and I love it. My sandwiches, with breakfast, whatever. I love it. It's so good. But the key to leftovers or the key to bringing stuff out here is you've got to get it heated all the way through and everything back to like it was when you first cooked it. Because if you're going away on even your favorite meal, if you come across some cold bit, it's a bit off-putting, right? You're like, ooh, you know, or like a piece of fat that isn't hot and kind of rendered and juicy. It's just fat. Yeah. Yeah. This jet boil 
did really good. If you look here, it's the standard setup, except it kind of locks in. As you twist it, there's these little feet things here. I don't know if you could see how that's hooked in there. You can see it on this one. So those hook in, there's like a nub in there and they just kind of hook to it. Not really solidly, but, and then these, this just folds, they fold in on themselves like that. And that's it. You just <laughs> store it in your bag. And this is from, this is a, this is a Jetboil brand one. So worked good. Worked really good. Man, I crushed that thing. That was so good. <laughs> Woo! Uh, the only thing that could have made it better if I would have brought just a little bit of bread to sop up all that juices. So the winds picked up a little bit. Um, more clouds have come in. I don't know if you can tell in the background back there, but it's taken the sun away. These are always the, if you don't do much with like photography or videography, <clears throat> these are the worst days to film when the sun is going in and out of clouds and you're in like a forested area. It's like you get these really bright spots, you get these really dark spots. What I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna head up farther up this track, try and I'm gonna try and peek out, up and out of this forested area, get up into the kind of the bare mountains, take a look, see if we can see what these clouds look like. There's an area not too far that way that I actually stopped and I did an MRE with the the Land Cruiser 80, I was up there. That was that was a while ago. I don't remember how long ago that was, but that was that's up this track farther, probably another four or five miles. But I, it was good. It was really good. I it warmed me up inside, and oh, it's so savory, right? It's really savory. It's one of those meals I like to talk about the different types of meals that you cook how they could possibly make you feel afterward. What what are your intentions either that night as you cook it or later that day as you cook it? You get something really savory like that. Kind of want to sit down next to a campfire, may, you know, maybe have some 18-year-old scotch and just relax after a meal like that. But I'm going to adventure up just a little bit more. little road washout right there. There is a ton of trees down. There is a lot of erosion on this road. But again, this is, we're at the end of winter time and we're getting spring showers. So some of these, some of these tracks, they will come in and, and grade them in a way because there's, there's some designated camping but that's, it's farther back. I'm, I'm way past all of that stuff. But I'm just about ready to climb up and out of this forested area here and transition into a desert, high desert, and then into the mountains. See what the, you can see how the trees change. I'm stuck. Let's see what's going on out here. This thing's probably gonna freak out that I open, open the door with it in drive. Oh, oh geez.
This thing's making all kinds of noise. Even on the outside that I have it in, in drive and I'm not in there. So I'm hung up on my rear diff. Hung up on my rear diff pretty good. Jesus, this thing, it's really, I, it's really steep here. This giant hole to get into the truck. All right, all right, I'm getting back in. Stop beeping at me. Toyota seat belts. Come on, baby. This thing's got a mind of its own. It's like, oh, you need to shift in the park. Let's see if we can back up. All right, we got... Squinchy. So, clearance-wise on this thing, I'm not a 100% where we're at. Yeah, we just diffed out. Clearance wise, I haven't done a lot of deep ruts in this yet. It's low, this truck is low. We'll try it again. <laughs> Just a little bit better line. I was in a rut on the driver's side, pretty big rut, and then part way up it, a rut developed on the passenger side, and it's just both both rear tires dropped into that. And being that these are small tires, you lose your clearances on your axles, so not that big of a deal. Back up, realign it, drove up it, no problem. But you can see I was talking about here, we've crested up and out of that little valley of forested area, and now we just have mountains. Gonna have to excuse the wind. I'm up here on a on a mountain, but I gotta show you guys these views. So where I came from was down down back in these valleys over here. And then the mountains that I like to go into with the snow locally to me are over there. I'll show you like a little little view of everything, but the wind is really picked up up here. Clouds. Is that a view or what? 360 degree view up here. The track keeps going that way, a long way. I'm gonna double back and go back down through that forested area. That mountain in the distance with the snow on it, with the clouds, oh, so good. All right, it's too windy up here. Well, that was fun. Hopefully it came out. I did a, a hyperlapse coming back down to here.
see if it turned out or not. I, I think I've only done that one time before and it uh, it worked out pretty good. So that was that was pretty fun. It's uh, the weather still, you know, it's like threatening, threatening to rain. Probably couldn't see it on the on the hyperlapse, but coming back through, you could see there's about five areas that would be flash flood areas that if it was flooding, you couldn't get through there. Really low creek crossings. And it would be on this would be pretty pretty high because this this thing is not that it's not that high in the air. So I was able to high center myself for the first time, get the diff stuck, but I was able to easily back out of it and get out of there. A lot of fun. Uh, it was really the first uh, kind of challenging thing I've done in this other than snow. I mean, I've been in the snow with it doing donuts and stuff, but this was the first time getting it out. It does good. I mean, it does good. It's It's got all those modern things that beep at you and try and tell you how to drive. But other than that, the only thing it's really missing is a little bit more aggressive all-terrain tires and, you know, being 33s, not these, whatever these are, 30-inch tires. But it, it does fine. The The thing about this truck is it drives so good on the road, I don't really want to mess with it. You know, I don't need a ton of really, really capable vehicles. I've got all the other ones that I use. And this one here for like a long, really nice long overland trip where you're not going to hit too aggressive of stuff. It's very comfortable to drive. It's, it's uh, better on fuel economy than most of my vehicles. <laughs> But other than that, you guys, I'm going to head out. I got a little drive to get home and just go relax. Oh, I got to get a battery for the uh, GX470. I got to do that. I don't know if I'll get that done today. It's getting kind of late now, but uh, I'll get that done this weekend. I also got my shipment in from Australia, which were the door panels for the 60 series. So I'll be working on that. As well as I ordered all my gears, my front and rear gears for the Land Cruiser 80. So it's about time to pull those diffs out and install the new lockers, the uh, Eaton E-lockers. New 488 gears going from 411 to 488 and lockers on that. So it should be pretty good. This has a factory rear locker. And every time I'm out in this, when I go off road, I will get it in a four high, get it in a four low, get the locker going. Remember I talked about, you need to get your four wheel drives out and actuate all the systems. This thing is very slow to go, to lock that rear locker. Very slow. You know, it's it's got a like a motor on it from the factory. So you gotta make sure you get out and exercise those mechanical items in your vehicles. Because if you don't, down the line, you'll need it and it won't work, right? Because it's got to, it's you just got to keep that stuff moving. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, this is a kind of a transitional time during the year where I get a lot of melting snow and rain, which creates mud. And it's hard, it's hard to get to a lot of the areas I want to get to without making a complete mess of the vehicle. So we'll play it by ear. But this is all oh, the food. Oh, pot roast. You guys got to. You guys make up your favorite meal, right? The day before you're gonna go somewhere, take it out there, make sure you reheat it thoroughly and have your favorite meal out in the wild. It's, I, I'm not sure there's anything better than that. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. I will see you all next weekend.